Joe said, my name is Joe Peterson, and I've been a concept artist in the games industry for, uh, I think, about 11 years and change or something like that. Um, I spent some time at Blizzard Entertainment uh, in the cinematics department, uh, and I was there for a total of about five and a half years, and uh, I'd since left uh, Southern California, um, moved a couple times, and I've been uh, freelancing on my own uh, since then. Um, and I happen to be up in Seattle right now. So um, it's really good, and thankfully it's working out. I've got a, uh, been able to work with a, a few various clients, and it's been really interesting going from one house to uh, being able to work with all kinds of different teams and different projects and stuff. So I'm going to share a little bit of my work before I jump into my project um, and uh, kind of explain to you guys sort of my relationship with 3D. So just like every other, um, or the majority of concept artists right now, I'm integrating more and more 3D into my workflow because it's just too, it's just too damn easy nowadays. Like, I'd be a fool not to. You know, whether you're blocking out a big structure to use for perspective or um, figuring out proportions first and being able to look at everything, for, or excuse me, look at things from every angle, um, there's a ton of advantages that come from 3D for a concept artist and let alone being able to just like produce a really, you know, slick, nice image for the client. So, you know, I don't think that's anything new. I think the, 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 the crossover of 3D and concept is something like we're all pretty familiar with at this point. So I don't think that's like a really novel idea, but um, I'll kind of show you, I'll share with you my experience integrating it into my work and how I'm, uh, uh, what I'm kind of, some of the stuff I'm doing with it, with ZBrush in particular, nowadays. Um, so here is a little bit of uh, personal and professional work. Um, this is uh, just something personal I did for myself to have fun with. Um, this thing goes automatically into slideshow mode, so I'm gonna just control the thing from here. Um, so I might be like flicking back and forth. But um, funny enough, uh, I did this piece, uh, sorry, that, this piece started in ZBrush, um, and so did this one, uh, and so did this one. So I was just kind of having fun one day doing a sketch, and I wanted to do a really organic, um, bulbous-headed kind of alien guy and, uh, in ZBrush, and so I did. And I, at that point, I kind of ended up with like a medium res sort of, you know what, this is killing me, so I'm going to jump out of that mode. Um, I had this like really loose sculpt, right? And I thought, well, I can totally keep going with this idea, but how would I, how do I, where do I go from here, right? So I kind of picked a nice angle I liked in, in ZBrush uh, of his head, of kind of the gold, his sort of torso up here. And um, I just put it, in, put it in Photoshop. I think maybe I had blocked out his uh, uh, robe or whatever it is he's wearing. Um, and I kind of just let myself go with it. So even though the ZBrush portion was kind of small, it was a great start because I knew I really liked this form and I was able to kind of sketch it and sculpt it and look around, look at it from all angles um, until I knew I really liked it. And then drawing over it was, was really fun and easy because, you know, I had these odd shapes that, um, you know, lots of circular, bulbous forms that uh, was um, easy to pull off because I already had it all, you know, tight in perspective in ZBrush, right? Um, here's another one, another personal piece, and it started the exact same way. I was just fooling around in ZBrush, and I wanted a weird kind of biomechanical, you know, armor over a woman. And um, I uh, kind of did a quick pose and brought her into Photoshop and just went from there. And uh, I mean, it's interesting, I didn't, you know, this, it sort of takes its own life after I get it into Photoshop, but it's definitely still closely related enough to what I did in Photoshop that I consider it like one solid pipeline. Um, but I play around in Photoshop and try things too, so I'll show you a little bit of that later. Um, exact same thing. I was thinking I want to do a high-tech helmet 
And I did and ended up drawing over it as like a test and ended up with something that um, I really like. So anyway, this is uh, more of my 3D stuff. I'm kind of learning 3D and getting into modeling. And so I'm doing a couple experiments and you know figuring out how to use stuff. This is another piece I did just for myself. And the guy is um, the, the alien in the, uh, the subject in the tank is, is just a ZBrush sculpt that I just kind of composited in the scene. And here's another all 3D piece where I'm just, I'm really like trying to figure out what my relationship with 3D is going to be in my pipeline. So I ended up doing a lot of modeling on this, but you know, it was a big learning experience. And so um, I'm learning like, okay, you know, cut the model short and then paint all the fun stuff and you'll go faster. So I have a bunch of pieces where I'm like kind of going back and forth and trying different things and um, getting different re results. So here's an older piece from Blizzard, and um, this is a really good example. I, I still like this piece, I'm still happy with it, but it's a great example of something I don't ever want to do again, which is eyeball the front and back of a mechanical intricate character with a bunch of circles at different planes and different intricate cut shapes and um, weird you know configurations that, I mean, I designed this thing in my head in like an hour and I spent 12 hours, you know, noodling it and tweaking it and shifting it so it read right and the idea was coming across and that's a problem we don't have in ZBrush, right? Which is one of the reasons I'm falling so much in love with it. Um, There's another old concept from Blizzard from my cinematics days. I did the Queen of Blades from, for the StarCraft cinematics. Um, and uh, so that, that kind of entails some of the stuff I do on my own. But another thing I'm doing, I'm starting to spend more time on, is a personal project that uh, I thought I'd share a little bit of. Um, it's all hand-drawn, like a lot of my personal work is kind of seems to be lately, which is funny that I'm kind of, I'm kind of coming all the way back around and back to the, my comic book roots, like, you know, Ghost in the Shell and, you know, old, uh, old Jeff Darrow, um, hard-boiled stuff from like the early 90s. I'm, I mean, I've always been in love with line drawing and I just found myself like coming back to it and coming back to it. Now, finally, I'm starting to make more of these personal pieces with it. So here's one piece from this story I'm developing. And uh, there was actually no 3D used in this. I got so far on the sketch that um, I didn't need it. Um, and here's another piece in, of one of the characters. And this was drawn over a ZBrush blockout. And the reason I did, and it's really loose and kind of goopy and muddy, but the huge help was that I know I'm going to draw this character a bunch of times, so I took the time it, uh, I needed to sculpt him in ZBrush, get his proportions right, figure out what is really going on, and then I have kind of this like master model, even though it's not high res and finished, but I have this master to come back to for reference, for different angles, I can light him different ways, and use it as I continue this project. So, with that said, how am I doing on time? Joe? Oh, you're good on time. Cool. Um, I will uh, show you the piece I made for the same project, uh, but for this presentation. Um, and I wanted to do a character that had some mechanical stuff, that had some weird mutations, um, had some loose kind of uh, organic details, and it was just a mix of all kinds of things. Um, it seemed like um, not only was it kind of fun, but it was like a great challenge to, to, to hit all these aspects of, uh, of designing uh, in ZBrush. And you know what? I found like an awesome solution for everything I needed to do. So here's the final, and um, I guess I'll show you, so you can see how I got to this point. I'm gonna jump forward and show you the, um, the final uh, block out for reference, if you can see where I'm headed. So this is the sculpt that um, I did as a block out for myself. And this is just for, to draw over. Um, and I built the whole thing knowing I was gonna draw over it. Um, so it's really loose and it's kind of scattered and I have like insert meshes in here, but I have a couple areas of high detail and some really specific things. 
Um, and it's really like a hodgepodge of, a di of t tons of different techniques, tons of different levels of detail. Um, but I don't really care because I'm, I'm building this thing for myself as a, as a, uh, a block out with enough fidelity that gets me, um, that makes the line drawing part really easy. So um, what do I want to say about this? I guess I'll just jump in and show you how I started. Um, so that's kind of where I ended up. I'm sort of happy with his side silhouette. And, you know, again, you know, I can go on and on about all the advantages of doing this. I can look at this guy from every angle. I can pop his silhouette. I can enlarge the shapes or change them really, really easily. Um, you know, all of the above, right? So it makes the, working like this really makes the connection between what I'm seeing on the screen and my imagination like really easy and really fast. And ZBrush is getting to this place where like there's so many new tools that work so well like the nano mesh brush and the, 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 the Z remesher and combining everything together, it's like, to tell you the truth, when I started this, sometimes I, I'll start a ZBrush project and just think, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna find this shape, but I, I'm gonna figure it out. Maybe I'll need to call Paul and like get some help, but we'll crack this nut if we can. But this one, I sort of thought ahead and I was like, I bet I could use this tool for that and this tool for that and then keep going and just sort of make it work, and I swear it all just like ding, 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 fell into place. So, I tend to uh, talk a lot, so if you guys want to jump in with questions or remarks or just tell me how you're doing or anything, just feel free. <laughs> um, let me go back to the beginning. So, my, I'll show you the, um, how I started the entire process. I needed to give myself just a loose drawing, so I had a plan, I knew what I wanted to do. And obviously it's different from the final, but um, this is what I wanted. I wanted a guy who didn't have any legs or lower body, and he's sitting on this floating device that's a, basically a sphere. Um, he's got some cloth and some other stuff, and he's got these huge growths on his back that like almost take up his whole body. And that was my plan. So I only looked back to this probably like halfway through the, the project, and then I abandoned it because I was moving forward. Um, let's see here. Okay, so this is kind of the first, first stages of the block out, and uh, you can see it's really simple, and I'm going for the sketch right now. I'll, all I know is I got a sphere, and I have a half a guy, and that's where I'm headed. So let me get that in, and then I'll start playing with proportions and adding things and tweaking things. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was really stretch out the Z remesh and uh, Z modeler brushes. And so I used that to get to uh, all this stuff. And this is really, really fun for me because I suck at perspective. But I want to draw a sphere with three perfectly evenly placed circular indents. And within those indents, I want cascading strips of metal, you know, like there's some sort of engine or turbine-y, whatever, magneto, magnet, you know, maglev thingamajig. But I don't want to, like, figure out the perspective on that stuff. But I really want to show all the detail and all the magic in there. So this is why, this is one of the great things about how all the tools come together for ZBrush now. So when the, when the um, let me see if I can show you the, the wires and stuff. So I dynameshed the big sphere a couple times because I was like, I think I needed to lighten it up or something. But um, before it was dynameshed, the, uh, the mesh was way more um, kind of flowy and clean, kind of like the, the, the blue, these polys here. And this shape, this circular, um, let me auto groups this so I can, uh, separate stuff. This guy, sorry, there's no light back here, so I have to um, stare at the keyboard. Uh, this guy was originally just one strip of polys that I pulled off the sphere. And I was able to do that because I could totally control the way I Z remesh the sphere with the indents in it. And I got, not only did I get the shape I wanted, but I got the subsequent flowing topology that let me continue to model and just get to the shapes that I, that I had in mind. And um, 
it was kind of weird, like, the way it fell into place. It was really, like, I was like, really? Like, no one, like, damn, it worked. So, um, I wanted to just give a quick example of, like, how I got to this kind of thing. Um, the, uh, you know, when the um, Z modeler brush came out, we all flipped out and we were all like, okay, wait, what the hell's going on? And so I fell in love with it immediately, but there was also another part of me that thought, you know, that's great and all, but I'm kind of like, yeah, it's like extrude and, you know, bevel and, you know, the Q mesh stuff is mind blowing. But I was, there's a small part of me that was like, ah, I wonder if I'm going to use that stuff because it's kind of like traditional box modeling and that's not what I think of when I think of ZBrush and blah, blah, blah. So, but what I found is the more I played with it and the more I used it in conjunction with other things, the more I began to appreciate that, yeah, it's closely related to traditional modeling tools, but it's within ZBrush and it's related and it can talk to all the other crazy ass things that ZBrush does, right? So it wasn't so much that, okay, yeah, great. So for me, what I mean to say is for me, it wasn't that, oh yeah, ZBrush has bevel now. It was more like, oh, that's just a whole other way to like mess with the topology and screw around with things and extrapolate and continue building shapes on top of shapes and all that. So um, the way that I got those uh, perfect circles was kind of like, let me just, all right, I'm getting into Wacom mode here. How you guys doing? Am I bored yet? Anything you want to know? No. Keep cool. going. Um, let's see. Like all of a sudden now that I'm in front of people, I have no idea how to use ZBrush and like the keyboard is like in another language and <laughs> so let's see. I'll just do something simple here, right? Uh, let me let me dynamesh this bad boy. Where's my dynamesh? I don't have it. Uh, Geo. It's super fun watching people dig through menus, right? All right, dynamesh. No. Okay. Um, so let's just say, like, uh, here I'll cut this up just a little bit more one more time. Um, so, compare, all right, so, you know, this isn't the most complicated shape, but uh, let me just see, I'll just kind of, I'll keep it a little bit straightforward um, for the purposes of the demo. Um, trying to get something that'll kind of, uh, prove my point here, so I want a little bit of like interesting change or something in here. Um, so let's just say I'm working on something, whatever it might be, and this is like a little component or a shape or something that I know I really want. Uh, the, and I, and it, it's going to be mechanical, so I want lots of little uh, sub shapes and details and stuff like that. Um, great, yeah, okay, I, I did something in ZBrush, cool. But let me remesh this, Z-remesh it, and then continue playing with it with the Z-modeler. And that's when, to me, that's when things get interesting. And now, imagine like I have a much more complex shape, like there's a couple holes in this, or some really weird indents, and they're, it's all just the way I want it. So, um, let's just... Go really low and see what happens. So yeah, I know this might feel like kind of a demo of tools that you, you already know, but um, the, the kind of the point that I want to make is that I really like was blown away by um, the potential of how all these new tools can come together when you use them in succession. And because cause like I was saying, right, like, yeah, Z modeler, awesome, bevel the square, like, wait, huh? But then when I started thinking, no, 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 that's right next to Dynamesh, and it's right next to Array Mesh, and 
blah, 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 I realize, oh, okay, hold on. So now I have this shape that it's the perfect shape I wanted, right? Very hard to model traditionally. Like if I was box modeling, it would take me all day. But I have also a very reasonable um, strips of geo to work with and to keep playing with, right? So if I open up the, um, if I grab the Z modeler, you know, brush, just, uh, whoops, alt, not control. You know, I can start pulling things out of here and um, using this geometry to do what, whatever, you know, whatever I want. Where's the one, what's the one that splits? Can I split all this at once? Can I pull all these off? Yeah, like separate them. Yeah, like select the uh, Q mesh. Go over, hover over the poly again. Q mesh. Q mesh, and now just apply it right on the surface. Huh? While you're doing it. Yep. Pull it out. Let me do no. poly group all. No, no, you can just keep it on single because you, oh, okay. you have it targeted with the uh, temporary. Boom. Now hold shift. Bing. No. Nice right, control. There you go. Bing. Ta-da. And so, yeah, there's like right angles in here, and it's a bunch of squares, but. Imagine if that shape was, you know, something really, really specific and really flowing with like a perfect circle on the end. Now I have this like great clean geo to work with. So again, that's how I got all those machine parts and I started pulling things off of stuff that was already there and uh, um, just, I just kept kind of kept going with all these details. So you can see like, you know, this, uh, sorry, you know, this shape flows perfectly around all these circles. You know, these uh, little shapes, sorry, I can use ZBrush, I swear. You know, all these little guys are flowing off of that big piece, and it all kind of works. And there's no box modeling in sight. And you know, as you know, I can divide this stuff and make it really tight and crease it all and, and keep modeling if I want. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to pimp, uh, point out how I got to um, some of these more interesting, like, hard to make shapes otherwise. Because I could model that stuff, right? But how fun is that, right? Not fun. And I lose the creativity, like, way fast and forget what I'm doing. Why am I modeling all this crap? Like, why do I care? But with ZBrush, it's like, no, I take the, the, the topology curve, and I'm like, no, I think it'll, it'll flow like this and flow like that. Z remesh, pff, off and running. So anyway, uh, I just added another couple little details in here for fun. I was just doing like um, extracts, I think, for these plates, uh, just to get some, some layering and some, some plating. And I just wanted enough complexity so that when I go to the drawing, uh, I'm, um, uh, I have enough information to work with. So let's see here. So I start, you know, this is like step one in my block out. And it changes dramatically from here. Um, I, uh, I think I started with this body and then posed him. You know, nothing terribly complicated, right? Just like everyone's been saying. And then I gave him uh, his little arms. Let's see, I think they work better over the posed one. Oops. I hate how the visibility stuff works. Sorry guys, hang on a second. And then uh, I gave him, I started his other arm, you know, extra duper, super duper simple, and then kind of fleshed it out. So I had, you know, kind of my guy started. Uh, and this felt like, all right, cool, I'm at like the, be I'm at the end of the beginning of the block out. Um, not terribly complicated. So from here, I'll show you kind of the mid ground, like towards the end uh, of how, what, what the block out looks like. Um, when I have almost everything in, but I'm still kind of tweaking things. So here he is with way more stuff. And one of the uh, big features of the character I knew I wanted were these crazy, like, high-V honeycomb growths on his back. Uh, 
And the way I did it is, and, and let me just interject, you know, I know this is kind of loose and it's not, you know, there's like so many amazing ZBrush artists that just like put this thing to work and come out with these amazingly like photo real insane pieces. But again, I'm using this as like a template for myself as a, as a guide um, because there's so many issues that are, it's just way easier to figure out here, right? In this 3D, like really flexible environment. Um, I have like floating parts that, you know, I thought, you know, I, I thought it was too busy down here towards his, uh, towards his lower back, so I just plopped a sphere on there and started sculpting out a big tentacle and just kind of shoved it around. And, you know, I knew it didn't have to be perfect, so I didn't bother wasting time making it perfect. Um, his arm's separate, too, which, is, uh, which was really fun because he's kind of a mutated character, and I can move it and change the proportions really easily without worrying about, you know, without worrying about uh, messing up my sculpt and stuff like that. Um, but another uh, fun thing that I wanted to share with you guys was, are these big growths on his back, right? Because it was like a main feature of the character. So I thought, yeah, I can do this with insert meshes, um, but it's, I just think it just felt like it was going to be difficult for some reason. Like I felt like it was going to take me a long time, and I kind of wanted them to f go in a pattern, like a slightly honeycomb pattern. And I thought, well, wait a minute. Nano mesh is completely based on flat poly uh, the surface of the polygons, the faces. So what if I just make my own poly strip in the pattern, or poly, I don't know, island, I guess, in the pattern that I want them to go, and then use my own shape as the nano mesh. Um, and so that's what I did. So before I had uh, this, you know, you remember, he was just kind of a guy with no growths on his back, right? But the way I went forward is using nano mesh, I, um, I'll never figure out this visibility thing. Now they're all on. <laughs> Can we talk about that later with Paul and we'll whoever see. else? We'll this see. is every time, do years. It's it's really simple. You just it is it. simple. I mean, no. <laughs> so I made my own um, this is the result of the nano mesh uh, procedure procedure uh, that I uh, kind of figured out for this case. And you know the point I feel like this is getting really dry and I'm kinda pressing buttons and showing you guys stuff, but like, I really want to interject that like, I really want to remark on how, you know, creatively, the, the process is so smooth now in ZBrush that it's kind of, like it's getting magical and sort of weird. Because I thought to myself, like, well, I kind of want him to have a bunch of growths on his back and I want them in a honeycomb pattern. Yeah, I can draw them in using insert mesh, but I might like be off and I might screw it up. But let me think. Nano mesh goes on faces, so let me put the faces where I want them, and these things will just pop in where I need them, right? And I thought, I bet there's a setting where I can make the proportion of the insert mesh or the nano mesh um, fit the face it's on. So if I make big faces up here and then cascade them sl smaller, the gross will do the same thing. I, I bet. I bet that'll work. And the whole thing took me like 10 minutes. And as a concept artist who is really tired of drawing things over and over in different perspectives and wants to just get to the idea and the design, like, it's a, it's like sorcery. It's magic. And I'm getting to that point where, like, I don't want to go back. Like, I can't not, like, this took me 10 minutes. Imagine drawing this in detail and figuring out all the shapes and erasing and coming back and blah, 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 blah. Um, so the, pr the process is just getting really smooth and really awesome. Um, and again, it was just like a conjunction of different tools that I thought, why wouldn't that work? And that, I think, is like the magic in this kind of environment because, you know, a lot of other standard packages, like 3D packages, you know, they're all artist-friendly, right? They're all made for the artist, you know, intuitive to use. And 
honestly, I think that's bullshit. Like, they're, it, it hurts my head sometimes how some really kind of easy to think of tools are missing from these other packages. And now that we're getting into Pat, like, the last few updates, like ZRemesher and NanoMesh, like, it's getting kind of crazy. Like, it was like Furio was saying, he can re ZRemesh a concept, and it's like the production guys can get their hands on it, and we're totally knocking down the, the barrier between, you know, concept and final models and all that stuff. So, these tools are the ones that let me just have a weird, and, and the point is, is like, yeah, you all understand what I'm saying about NanoBrush. Yeah, the NanoBrush goes on the polygon, right? Like, that's what it does. Thanks for the explanation, Joe. But my point really is, is that I had an arbitrary creative idea. I was like, honeycomb, huge honeycomb pattern growths on his back. I want that. Does, will this work? Yes, it, then check, and yes, it worked. Okay, that to me is artist friendly. Like box modeling and fucking, you know, having meshes that like can't, they, the program doesn't understand the, it's the mesh it made itself and like I'm just over it, you know? So this is why I kind of wanted to stop and talk about the, the, the tumors or whatever the hell these things are on, the, on his back because it was like there was the, the, the barrier between in here, in my head, and what was on the screen, like totally dissolved. And it, honestly, it was, it's fucking awesome. So uh, let me keep going here. I'm trying not to make this too dry, because I'm not, yeah, I clicked on this, and then I clicked on that, and blah, blah, blah. So the way I, how I got this batch of tumors is um, I was using uh, this, I think, as my template. And all I did was I broke out the topology tool and I drew, I thought to myself, all right, I want, I want them to cascade down in a honeycomb thing and I want them to be huge on the top and get smaller on the bottom, right? So I drew the polys like that. And it was something like this. I'm, this is probably gonna be clunky, but I don't care. I don't care anymore. Questions, complaints, requests, thoughts, innermost dreams. So, so I take it you like NanoMesh? Is that a, a fair assessment? It's cool, whatever. <laughs> yeah. would, would you name a child NanoMesh? If you guys will sponsor me, I might. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sponsor are we talking about? What are you, We're what? talking like you, do you just need a serious. gold shirt? You just need no, a gold no, shirt? No, 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 no. I'm talking mortgage, like let's now you now you're getting crazy. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. They won't <laughs> even don't worry about it. we got don't worry. Hey, let me They won't even sponsor my mortgage. Let so. me break the wall down and then we can all follow. So let me I this this came out wrong because I'm sort of what kind of percentage are you looking for? Pardon? What kind of percentage large. <laughs> Sorry, let me um, try and just configure this right. So I know the polys up here are big. And this is hard, dude. I'm like, I want you guys to get something out of this. I want it to be smooth. Shit. But I think you know where I'm headed, right? I'm making these big ass polys up here and I'm slowly gonna start squeezing them in into this like honeycomb type of deal, right? Meow, meow, meow. So, um, that worked, cool. Now uh, I'm just gonna kill control shift this poly group, no. Why didn't it give me only the poly group? What did I do? Oh. No? I just want the purple faces and I'm control shifting on them. What did I do? Paul, Paul I need your help. What happened? What do you need? Help Sorry, me, dude. What do you want? Um, stop playing games. Um, <laughs> I just want the... <laughs> Oh, I want the purple, Paul, uh, the, these big 
purple blue ones. I'm control shifting yeah. on them. Why aren't? Why isn't everything? Because you else? probably got something else hidden. So show everything first. Okay. Now try it. Make sure you show everything. No. Nope. Show where is it? Where is Con it? No, you got control shift and then show tap point? in the document. Control shift and tap yeah, in the document. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Now just do the purple. You have to click on the vertex point. You got to click on the vertex point. Of the ah. Purple. There you go. So random. Boom. Thank you, Paul. Hey, I'm here for you. Right on. Um, support. So now I have um, this desk. like custom strip of polys, right? That is, again, like, it's not that complicated. It's not impressive. But it's what I need for this situation. And look how long it took me to make it, right? Like, I've been trying other programs. And I've been playing around with 3D, like those all 3D pieces. Um, I don't want to, I'm trying not to go on a rant, but uh, it's too late for that, I guess. Um, I can't do any of this shit as fast as I can. Uh, I, I, I do it faster in ZBrush. <laughs> I was just going to translate that. Thank you. Can you help? Like, join in at any point. Use ZBrush. It's great. Yeah, ZBrush is cool, and that's why. Okay. <laughs> so let's just, for, you know, again, really quick, like, I'll just make an arbitrary um, shape here. Uh, Dynamesh is in geometry because I know how to use this program. So I want really low, whatever, just for the sake of the demo. Can you guys make it so we can get like crazy low? Like, like eight polys for this whole thing? Or, you know, 10 or 12 or something? On a cylinder or a cube? Whoa. Never mind, I'm <laughs> painting myself into a corner. <laughs> a, a cube, you can do it. The Z remesher will do that. You could probably get close to it. Yeah. So bear with me for just one second while I like just make something. Again, you know, when I was sculpting those tumors, I was like, I have this weird like alien egg, like, flower, cauliflower growth in mind, and, like, no problem, just sculpt it on a sphere, and you're good to go, and it was just, like, there were no, there were no, I hit no hiccups, and it felt so good after trying to do all kinds of different things in other programs, and combining, and importing, and exporting, and well, this one's good at that, and that one's good at this, and now it's, like, as I, as I said earlier, you know, with the combination of all these different tools now, it's getting to the point where it's like, it's like a moot, moot point. And because I can do it all in here. So I don't know what this thing is. Double, double nipple growth. <laughs> um, Joe, have you played with initialized states? Maybe that's what you're looking for with the... Solar. Oh, yeah, where you can control your starting yeah, shape. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Um, yes. In a way, I, I was thinking more like I want to make a certain shape and then get the extra, extra low poly version of that. Uh, yeah. And we'll talk. Okay. Side note. Okay. And then we'll talk about the sponsorship and the money and stuff. The good news is Jaime's right in the front row, and that's really the guy that you want to talk to. I'm coming. We're going to figure this out. Um, so give me a second to get my thoughts together. Now I will just do the um, Z modeler, which is here. And I will go like this. And I will go nano brush, nano mesh. I can't keep all the names right. Do I have to hit all polygons? Let's try it. Um, and then M to go to your subtools. Boop. And A. Thanks. So I know this is kind of like this exact same thing you just saw for. Um, uh, that Jason was doing, and he stole a part of my presentation, so <laughs> I'm just going to pretend it didn't happen and make you guys sit through this again. You, you know what the worst part is? He came to me last night and goes, no one's showing nano mesh, right? I said, no, not that I know of. Yeah. And then I didn't know you and were And then it's like, mesh. bing, bing, yeah. bing, yeah. So, you know, uh, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but because I'm hoping you you get my point, right, that with all these cool um, settings, I can, make, uh, I can make these behave the way I want. 
I can fit them to the size of the poly, so my plan to have them cascade down in size is working. And uh, I need to fix the alignment. The, you know, there's all these check marks in here where you um, uh, can just configure everything. And that's another thing I love. I'm starting to love about ZBrush. I'm really, like, happy about ZBrush today. It's the whole weekend because I'm just pumped, you know? Um, it's, uh, it's that... Um, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Streaming across the world. No idea what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, you guys get it, right? Like, I would, I would turn these to, yeah, have the nipples out, and then there's another setting where they won't, I think they won't get smushed. And um, so, you know, do a little variation, some natural variation. And so, you know, with a few clicks, I have this, like, cascading, organic, totally arbitrary, like, model happening that took... Like, no kidding, like, maybe despite putting, sculpting my, my tumor thing, it was like 20 minutes. I was like, is this going to work? And yeah, and then our, I guess I'll move on. And it was like the bulk of my character. It's just like whole back. So anyway, how's everyone? You guys are quiet, and it's like I'm feeling kind of self-conscious. Do you want to, can we just talk, or do you want to? They're into the demo, man. Sweet. Especially when you said, turn the nipples out. That was the clencher, right? It's the quote of the summit right now. <laughs> Never thought I'd see that in a demo. With turn nano the mesh, out. it's very easy to turn the nipples outward. Yeah. <laughs> um, what the hell am I doing? All right. <laughs> We've been here for <laughs> too long. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. So... Uh, do you want to see more of the mid-stage? Um, You've got 15 minutes left, so. All right, cool. All right, I'll jump ahead a little bit. So this is my final, and um, I don't know if you remember, but earlier on, his cloth uh, that's hanging off the, all this junk was way longer, and at some point, you know, I just decided to cut it in half and stick more machinery under here. And sorry, let me give you a better view. More machinery. Um, and uh, I wanted that to be kind of more of the characteristic, so I, I cut, cut down on the cloth. And back here, I added all this junk and all these details with, like, insert meshes. I grabbed, um, you know, I grabbed the piece I modeled uh, before. And, uh, whoops, sorry. Um, this this uh, ring type, this blue guy right here. I had him from the front of the model, and so I just grabbed it. And I thought, yeah, he's got a spare part back there. It's hanging, it's hanging off some, some string and um, stuff like that. So it feels kind of funny showing this back part here because I'm like, I just kind of made a mess for myself. Um, but it's sort of the point because I knew that the back was going to be really complicated and it was going to be like tons of straps and things he's forgotten about and different packs and bags and trinkets and stuff. So kind of making a mess back here was fine. Um, I had enough uh, clear shapes to work with later. And again, that was my, that's ultimately my goal. I'm gonna do a line drawing over this. So like on something like these guys, you know, I can still, sorry, oh God. I can still see the straps and kind of the, you know, the funky stitching and a little bit of detail. And I can kind of like um, glaze over that stuff later and sort of turn it into other things. But I got these like hanging cords and all that stuff. Another thing, again, back to the, to the circular shapes, like I configure them how I want, even though these are mega, mega simple insert meshes, um, I put them in the place I want, and then I have these perfect cylinders in space as reference for perspective and, and shape later on. And I can do whatever I want. Um, I can even like ignore them and draw over if I want, or like erase them out if I want to. So um, I never stop looking at the big shape and the big proportion. You know, it's all about the, I love this like side view. Um, and oh, during the course of the, the block out, I'm like, you know, I'm pulling his head out more and more and more. Um, hide, nope, hide everything. You know, I'm like grabbing a gigantic move brush and just 
I'm like, no, he's not, he's not hunched over. He's not broken enough. Let me just, you know, keep moving everything and um, do, doing whatever I want, you know, looking at it from really far back and popping out. You know, I popped out these tumors on the back like so many times. I thought they were, you know, I put them in and I thought they're all, whoa, this is so crazy. And then I zoomed out and realized they're really small and just kept pulling them and pulling them and pulling them. And again, this is all like things I used to fight with, just working purely 2D. Um, so towards the end of the block out, I, uh, I start adding lots of little details like, um, you know, his necklace and his hat and his little weird, just little, uh, you know, using the curved tube snap to give him little um, bracelets and just details and things like that, little trinkets that uh, um, are going to be great information for later for the line art. I don't always work this detailed. Um, when I do my block out, it totally depends on the piece. And again, you know, it's another advantage I get from starting in 3D is that uh, it's kind of like if I really need something a certain way, I can build it and get it just right. But if it's not important, I can kind of throw something together and just get it started so that um, uh, I, I kind of, it's like a note for later. And, you know, ZBrush is just like, it's so weird and loose and flexible that I can just throw all these things together and um, at, at will. You There's know, a he, he, question here on the floor if you want one. Please. On the floor. Hey, just amazing stuff. Uh, curious Thanks. as to your rendering process, like how do you get the line art out of this? I'm about then, to jump into that oh, at fantastic. this very second. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I just thought of a great phrase. I don't always work in this detail, but when I do, I use subdivision levels. I use what? What did I say? Subdivision levels. I'm just doing marketing stuff in my head. I don't know why. You just made me think of like that commercial. I don't always work in this yeah. detail. I don't always work but like But when this. I do, I use subdivision levels. Yeah. Okay, forget it. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> nice. I'm glad, dude, keep, keep them coming. One of them will land. Um, okay, let me try to run through this. So uh, I use... Um, some filters to get outputs out of ZBrush. Someone put online just recently, like on ZBrush Central somewhere, a, uh, like an ink outline uh, mat cap, and I thought, oh, my people, like, let me grab this thing. And even, they even made a bunch of variations, and you know, for some reason, like the examples they had were fucking beautiful, and I even tried it on one of my models, and it was, uh, it was nice, but I threw, them, threw it on here, and it just didn't give me the information I needed. So, um, I learned this technique recently, and uh, I think, did you show some of this stuff, Paul? Uh, I touched on it, yeah, on Friday. Yeah. I told everyone you were going to go. Cool. So um, I'm learning more and more just recently about uh, the, the filters and the passes and stuff. So I used, um, I used two of the BPR filters to get a, a nice output to draw over. Um, and then I comped them together in Photoshop. I thought, let me try this one. All right, let me try the other one. And by themselves, neither of them had everything I wanted, but they were doing things I know I really needed for later. So I, um, I got really frustrated. And I was like, God, why can't I just get it right? And then I thought, I have software for this. I'll put them together in Photoshop. And it was like awesome. So uh, the first one I used was, let me just um, bring his hat back. Do we have his hat? No? Come on. I'm lost in my own sub tools, so no, no hat for the render. Boom. Yeah, yay hat, yeah, better. So I turn on, another thing I do is I'll, I'll, I'll turn on perspective and I'll kind of crank the um, the FOV a little bit to get a little bit of that exaggeration and have him like come out in space a bit because it's really easy to flatten things down. You know, I got this dynamic sculpture and I've been working on it for days and then I, you know, put, choose one angle and he's like, hey, what's up? So I, I like to pop him and exaggerate and kind of break it a little bit just for, so it comes through later in the 2D piece. So the two filters I used are the depth pass right here. Um, and the edge, no, I'm sorry, not depth, cavity and edge detect down here. So the way I get those to start talking 
is I just do uh, a colorize filter, make it black, and um, turn it up all the way. And I fire it, we'll do cavity first. I fire it up all the way. Let me do a BPR, see if it's activating in the technologies. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I also, one of these doesn't work. Having a flat color and then just the filter over it is perfect. But one of these doesn't work with a flat color. This one does. So here's one pass, basically. Yeah, that's because Cavity's uh, looking uh, at the model. Edge detection's looking at more color. Oh, interesting. So here's one pass, and this one is a uh, cavity, so it, it's, it hits these nice parts of the model where it's, um, I guess it, it looks like it's turning away from the camera. I'm not sure. But if I want to pump it up, you know, I can play with all these settings, just like everything else. Um, so that's one of them. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's totally, like, I'm on the way. Like, that's going to work. Um, I don't know what I did now. I'm not getting the uh, 0.07. I'm going to do 1.4. So yeah, I thought, all right, this one's great, but I still need more information. So the other one is, so up here is, this is awesome, because you can do multi, multiple filters. Um, I throw on, that one was cavity, right? This is edge detect. So it's the same thing. It's colorize, and I'm colorizing black. Because I just need, it's almost like I just need the information from the filter by itself. Turn it up all the way and uh, turn, do a render. I've got edge detect turned all the way up to one. And uh, I think I need to play with, some, huh? Not I'm not rendering. You've got a oh, right. I need, a th I need a material. So yeah, for this one, it doesn't work with materials. So I tried to pick like a simple graphic one. Um, and I forget which one I ended up with, but let's just say it was this one. So I render over this, and then I get my um, outlines. And I've cranked the, uh, the settings, right? So it's just crazy. So you know, I sit here, and I tweak it a bit till it's just right, You know, just enough information. And it takes me a minute because um, it's really easy to blow it out. So I go too far and then pull it back until it's like sitting right in the sweet spot. So I output these passes. Um, oh, and I did, uh, you know what I did this time is I pumped out all the other standard BPR passes, um, the depth and the mask and the shadow, uh, because I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to, might use them, I might not use them, but I, I made them for myself just in case. And actually came in really handy, and I kind of discovered a whole new trick that um, I'm kind of really excited about, actually. So here's my uh, line art Photoshop file, and here's my, one of those passes. Here's the other one together. Can you see that? Yeah. And um, here they are mixed together. So I got a lot of information here that's really easy to draw over. The two of them combined is rad. I need a little bit of volume so I can remember like what's where and I can kind of like, you know, I can see um, uh, forms like his big shoulder popping out behind him and stuff. So there's a little bit of uh, volume information that I'm using, but it's mostly this, um, these, this really high contrast edgy stuff that's going on in here. So um, let me see what I did. I start blasting these. I blasted them a little bit with a curves layer to um, knock down some of that gray, right? So that I have uh, uh, an even more hard line uh, layer. Uh, I didn't like the angle of his face, so I just grabbed it and moved it more to my liking. And then to um, draw over it, I have a, just a levels to knock it down. So I got my nice, like, you know, it's like my digital tracing paper, right? Um, before that, though, I did a, you know, it's not, it's not one to one. So I do another quick pass to kind of breathe some life into it, uh, change some details, fix some weirdness, you know, because the model's so dirty and clunky in, in places. Um, you know, I wanted, I, like, I actually like changed the, uh, 
I like, we could, his arm, his small arm wasn't coming out of the silhouette and it was too tight against him. So I like, just by hand, I just drew out the arm like that. Um, I, I gave him bigger tumors because for all my work, they didn't show up at this angle. So I said, screw it, I'll just draw him in. Um, and his hat, like up here, I just kind of yanked out the corner to uh, have a m more fun silhouette. And a bunch of details up here that I didn't want to bother doing in ZBrush. It was getting time consuming and I just needed to get on with the, get on with the show. So here is my, this is what I draw over, basically. Um, I'll probably knock this down a bit. And uh, that's what I give myself, right? Just enough. Um, but look at this cool stuff down here. Like all this like tight mechanical detail that I modeled, it's all there. I can see these um, circles sitting next to each other. It's, it's all the, it's all the reference, like if I'm gonna make stuff up on top of this, I have all the spatial reference I need to add things onto the shapes or take them out correctly in perspective or at least close enough that it looks, totally looks like it works, which is something that I've just always fought with you know, in my career. It's like I have the idea, I know what the shape is, but now I gotta draw it in, like, perfectly in perspective. And so just for me, this, this works so much better. All right, so let me see. Um, this turns into this. And as you can imagine, you know, this is where a lot of the legwork happens. Like there's a lot of, it's just a lot of drawing time. Um, I added some fun little solar panels up top. I added detail here and there. Uh, but you know, mostly, like, I mean, you can see the tight relationship between my 3D reference and um, uh, the, um, the, the final line art. Let me bring the under layer back in a little bit. I mean, I almost practically traced his face, and I didn't feel guilty about it. I felt so good about it. It took 10 minutes. I was like, fuck oh, yeah. You, got, you only got a couple of minutes left, Alrighty. just so you know. Cool. Um, so let me kill, sorry. Bink, bink. So here's the, f sorry, I'm getting lost again in my own layers. So here's the final, and the, here is the uh, model, right? And it's close, man. I just kind of exaggerate what's there. I add a couple wrinkles. And all the work I did on his facial expression, it comes through, and I'm, I'm good to go. I don't have to figure anything out at this point. I just have to, like, just keep jamming. So um, I'll talk just a tiny bit about, I mean, here's the res I'm working at. Let me see. Here's 100%. I forget what res it is, but I'm down to this detail, right? Look at these nice circles next to each other. I love it. It's kind of a weird thing to, like, get off on, but... You try drawing them, draw a bunch of circles in space by hand next to each other at arbitrary locations. Yeah. <laughs> Takes the fun right out of it. So here's my final. Um, thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Really glad you like it. Um, I don't usually use passes. How much time do I have? Minutes. Minutes? Minutes, not Multi even. Let Two me show minutes. you the one, the one cool thing I did. So I, uh, you know, I got a bunch of layers that it's all really flat stuff. I'm, I added some AO by hand because I didn't like the, the, um, the pass I got out of ZBrush. That's fine. I use these shadows. This cast shadow is, uh, is from ZBrush, and I kind of blurred it out because the the lighting in the situation is diffused, but I got a hard shadow out of ZBrush, but the c shadow was correct. So I left it in it where it was, but just blurred the edges of it to just soften it out. Um, and another really fun thing I did was I got this cool, the depth pass was really cool. And I was like, ooh, how do I use that? So I used it in a couple ways. I used it on top of the... Um, the color layer, and I just subtly, I don't, can you guys even see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
So what it's doing is it's brightening up everything that's closer to you. And it's not loud. It's not, it's not super intense. But I just thought it brought more form to the whole thing totally for free out of ZBrush. And then another thing I did, which I think I'm going to do like from now on because I, it's really sexy. It's, a, it's very, very subtle. But I use it on the line art. Let me see if I can kill everything. Um, now I'll leave. Yeah, you, you can see the results actually. So I used that depth pass as a mask on a hue saturation layer that's on the line art. Can you see that subtle change? I'm turning it off and on. No? OK, let me, let me crank the effect. Huh? Top of lane will sense? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Let me, let me just blast it so you can see what it's affecting. So it's affecting like it's using the depth pass to affect all the lines that are on objects like farther away, right? So I'm basically, I can like do things to the 2D line art that correspond with 3D space. And if you don't think that's sexy, you're watching the wrong presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so I used, uh, I used that on here. And you know, I tried a lot of stuff with the different passes, but this was that color pop and this one were the last ones. And I was like, ooh, this is kind of working. Because the other ones were a little more heavy handed and didn't quite come together. So um, here it is normally. And you know, it's really subtle as you, some of the colors are getting crunched up there. but. Um, I can see it on my screen, and it's just making the far away edges like lighter and more saturated. So there's this subtle effect of like he has his own atmospheric perspective just on his lines. And um, I really like it, and I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm, I'm really excited actually to play with the passes and the filters some more to see what else I can come up with. But uh, that kind of covers it. I hope, um, hope you have a good idea how I uh, finish this thing out from the beginning to the end. And, um, I think that's my time. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Joe Peterson, everybody. Yeah.